type of culture in the Philippines that goes pahala na, pwede na, you know, oh that will do, that will do, you know, um, let heaven take care of it, if and when. There's a lot of cynicism about corruption too because, you know, people see, oh it's happening and everyone's doing it, um, but that's what you have to defeat, you have to defeat this idea that this is normal. It is not normal, corruption is not normal, corruption is a distortion. Corruption scandals are a staple of Philippine politics, but during uh, the eight years of these four projects, corruption accusations and cases became major drivers uh, in national politics in the Philippines. Around the world, we see a movement now for a, a number of very honest leaders coming out on a wave of public outrage, saying, we gotta fix this. And then the question is, what do they do to fix it? Usually when there's a, a whole series of endemic sources of corruption, it's a combination of history, institutions, and incentives. And until one or all of those things begin to change, nothing important really begins to move, despite the rhetoric that you might hear. You have to work on it culturally, a change of culture, right? You, you cannot arrest a million people who might be taking these petty bribes or doing you know, some kind of petty corruption. You, you would have to change the system, you would have to change the culture. That's the biggest challenge. MSI has had an incredible opportunity over several years to work with the government of the Philippines and civil society to help build the capacity to enhance government performance and to combat corruption. In the judicial reform, we were assisting the anti-graft court to be more effective in uh, resolving cases, to be more efficient, because uh, that's a big problem in the Philippines. It takes years before a case can be resolved. When you do trial work at the, at the Sandiga Baya, the anti-graft court, you always face the best lawyers that money can buy here in the Philippines. Yet, the prosecutors that we have lack the experience to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. In the area of corruption prosecution, we provided the trainings. We developed the training curriculum and training materials, not only on the substance, but also on prosecutorial skills, like uh, trial advocacy skills for the uh, prosecutors. In the U.S., we did a lot of study tours so that uh, the justices, the prosecutors, could see how the agencies in the government of the U.S. are working in uh, fighting corruption or in making uh, court processes more effective and efficient. In 2001, um, the conviction rate of the Office of the Ombudsman was a dismal 12%. The conviction rate of the Office of the Ombudsman uh, between 2004 and 2005 actually increased to about 50%, the highest level since the Office of the Ombudsman was created in, uh, in about 1987. The governance tool that this government has chosen to do most of its work in anti-corruption, good governance, and delivering basic services is really the national budget. And so there is a lot of need and demand from civil society to be able to understand this process. In 2007, we proposed a project and we're very, very uh, fortunate and lucky that MSI and USAID were there at the time. We have a government now who's using the budget as its you know, reform tool. And then you ask yourself now, okay, the agenda is there. It's being pushed by this government, as was articulated through the work we all did. Now, how do you institutionalize it? When the institutions are weak, it becomes especially important to have coalitions across institutions. In this case, in the Philippines, I think that especially means having the business community involved, having the CSOs deeply involved, having academia, having the media, play important roles in trying not just to create change, but to sustain that change over time. 
This is what I inherited. There's this Spanish saying, you know that? No bebes aguas que no veas, no firmes cartas que no leas. Do not drink anything that you don't see, do not sign anything that you don't read. So, just signing alone, they stuck up. We uh, urgently need the fraud examiners because that is one field for fraud examination where we are sorely missing because we do not have experts here in the Philippines. Hopefully by the end of the week, we will have the very first coming out of the Philippines, which is a whole bunch of certified fraud examiners coming out of the Office of the Ombudsman, coming out of the Department of Justice, and coming out of the Commission on Audit. The Ombudswoman and I both realize that uh, we need each other's cooperation to be able to investigate properly and prosecute uh, these cases to conclusion. Over the past two months, all of these sectors have come together and articulated what's been working for the Philippines and where they've been stuck. I hope that you will all find many meaningful lessons in your own continuing struggle for good and effective government. So why is this relevant to you today? Well, you're probably thinking, what can I do to really make a difference? How can I use what I'm learning now to go out and make a difference? There's a very rich exchange uh, among civil society, among NGOs, among citizens on how we could work together to defeat corruption in, in the Philippines. What can we do? Is there, is there anything? What are the concrete steps? Can we, if TV5, if ABS, if Inquire, if, if, if you, you guys, your amplification is huge, can we actually make a difference? It's clear now that this administration, this government, this accountability community has leaders who have the, demonstrated the political will and the commitment to pull all the pieces together to create a coherent strategy uh, to address corruption. There is always fresh wind that experts bring to the Philippines. You see sometimes uh, we hear, we read, we talk about corruption, but there's nothing like people giving us new approaches. We now have a group of people who are talking about anti-corruption and actually want to do something about it. This is like a disease that you cannot just expel. Uh, you have to really work at it to get it out of the system. The doors are wide open. We don't know if we have enough capacity. We don't know if we have enough breath or presence in the Philippines to institutionalize this. Now it's important to sustain the momentum. There is a real chance that these efforts will actually be effective and will actually generate gains for the economy and the country, not just in the medium term, but even in the long term. Our people have to buy into the idea of what we're doing. And this is their commission, this is their job, this is their career. This should be their pride. This should be their legacy.